How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week six of our first season here as the offensive coordinator at Eastern Michigan. I'm going to quickly interrupt this video to again say thank you for getting the channel above 2,500 subscribers. Uh, now, as a reward and as a thank you for that, uh, if we hit 200 followers on Twitter, I'm going to be giving away a exclusive Goonmaster t-shirt. This is literally the only one of these in existence. I'll get another one made and I will send it to one person. Uh, again, though, we're going to do that on Twitter. So once we hit 200 followers on the platform, uh, we'll do a giveaway there. And the link to my Twitter will be in the description below. Um, but again, thank you guys for 2,500 subs. That's incredible. We are coming off of the back of a conference opening win against the Ohio Bobcats. Now we've got Akron to go up against, and the Zips are 2-1 and one and favored to win and the higher overall team uh, in this matchup, although statistically we've been having a better season than them. We have recruiting to do first, and uh, I think that we picked up our first commit last week so that should be pretty big marcus brown the 76 overall juco athlete from norton ohio uh he's not the quickest guy but i think he'd make probably a pretty decent safety maybe a linebacker uh i'm not entirely certain where he's gonna go brandon williams the kicker has locked us out but we are just going to open the door if we have the available we have three uses left we're gonna use one there on a kicker which is a little bit controversial uh, but we should be in a decent spot to fight off Central Michigan for the rest of this year. They're only getting a few more points per week, I think. If anything, we have a better amount of bonus points, so we'll see. With the remaining points that we have this week, though, I think what we're going to do is offer some scholarships and scout some players. We have a bunch of guys on the board that we haven't looked at. And Avery Rawls, we're actually pretty much the only team really actively looking at this guy. So he stays at a 77 overall as a defensive end, uh, and he's not even a Juku guy either, so we'll offer him the scholarship uh, immediately. Rashad Ross is a similar situation. I don't think teams are going crazy for him. He's a 79 overall, not a Juco guy. We'll offer him a scholarship. Uh, this is probably going to be the same thing over and over again. Troy Carter, 76 overall. Carl Newby goes up to a 73. Uh, can we get one more? Lay McCoy down to a 67. I guess I was going to offer a bunch of scholarships, but we only have points to scout uh, two more guys, and there's five more on the board. So we'll look at Jesse Garrett here. The linebacker is a bust. Uh, that's kind of unfortunate. In our final points of the week, Clinton Whitfield, the defensive tackle, goes up to a 72 overall. That is more than good enough, and we're only 260 points behind the guy. So an easy bit of recruiting this week. Not a whole lot that we had to do. We have the 53rd best class just because we've signed one person. How many five stars have gone? Notre Dame already has two five stars. They're 3-0 to start this season. They've been very disappointing recently, and they've dropped down to an 88 overall, and they're only four prestige, so they have not had an easy time. Texas has the other five star that's been signed. They also start the season undefeated. How about we take a look at ESPN before we get into this game? Uh, I don't think we checked it at the end of the last episode. So we don't know if there's any chaos from last week. There will be big games this week. Number one, Georgia plays number 13, Tennessee. Cal at number two will go on the road to face Auburn, the number 20 team in the country. Oregon just beat UCLA 36 to 30. So uh, the Bruins dropped down their 16th now. And now Oregon gets to go on the road and play Texas A&M. After a disappointing loss, Coastal Carolina bounces back with a decent win against Southern Miss. Probably not as convincing as they would have hoped for. Notre Dame will play Clemson. LSU will now play UCLA. There is a lot of good out-of-conference matchups this year. Michigan playing Purdue. And I'm curious, where was it that UCLA was ranked? They were just 14th before their loss to Oregon. So they only drop a couple of spots. That's not all that bad for them. Nothing really crazy in the rest of the top 25. Michigan and Purdue playing. I think we already knew that, though. And dropping out was West Virginia, Ohio State, and Ole Miss. Our Heisman watch list. Brandon Brown still at the top, although he didn't have quite as good of a game as he did the time before. Only 26 carries this time around for 136 yards, but four total touchdowns. Uh, there must have been a player that did really bad because everybody else has moved up a spot, so... 
whoever was second place has fallen off. Steven Ostrander, the quarterback from Georgia. Scott Gilbert for the running back from LSU and the running back from USC and Jonathan Robinson are up there. And now in fourth is David West, the redshirt senior quarterback from Coastal Carolina. He went 28 of 41 for 311 yards, uh, three total touchdowns on the game. He's 10 for one interceptions or touchdowns to interceptions, but his completion percentage maybe could be a little bit better. All right, well, let's get just right into this game. 79 overall for the Zips with an 83 offense and a 78 defense as we are the home team. We're going to wear the gray today. We'll go gray and green and then Akron. Uh, well, I they haven't been updated. Their uniforms definitely look a little bit dated at this point. They don't really have a whole lot of options. We'll just keep them in their standard ways for now. So another game, another bit of action as we come into this one. Akron offensively scoring more points than us, but putting up fewer yards. Uh, they're having more success in the running department than we are, but not by much. And we are definitely passing the ball better. Defensively, they give up a decent amount of points, way more than we do. And they give up a solid amount of yards. They're actually looking pretty good statistically there, but just not as good as us. We are really shutting teams down with the sim defense. I guess that shows how bad I am at defense in this game that when I'm not in control of it, our bad team does really well. Their top players are running back at 91 overall, and then they go down to the right end and the fullback. Uh, fullback doesn't have a lot of usage, so that's good, but this running back, 50 carries for 327 yards. Only five touchdowns, though. We'll hope that our guys can slow him down, and there's some injuries. They have a free safety out for a couple of weeks, so that'll help us out on the offensive side of things. Once again, we are here at Ryan Nearson Stadium, waiting on that gray turf to still be installed still, but the green will work just fine as we will look to get this one underway. Akron tails on the toss is always the correct option. They win it, and they're going to elect to kick the ball off. Just a five-mile-an-hour win today, and let's see what kind of return that we get. No return. Uh, okay. Well, I guess that's not terrible. Uh, we're going to go to Wagner right off the bat. Jesse is having a great season. Let's see. Can the offensive line continue? And the answer is yes. Oh, wow. Jesse fumbles the ball, but Charles Robinson, the lineman, picks it up and keeps the drive from turning into a very quick disaster. That was pretty clearly a clean fumble. Thankfully, we're able to hold on to it. We're going to go right back to Wagner. He got six yards the first time out. He's got great blocking and a few more yards. Nine to be exact on his second carry. Well, screw it. Let's get uh, Ed Bird involved in the running game. The read option. He's going to keep it. Oh, no, he's broken. He's frozen. A little bit of jet lag, as I like to call that. And <laughs> he loses four yards. You never like to see that. Thankfully, he doesn't fumble the ball. Holds on to it just fine. But now it's second and 14. We got a long ways to go. Throwing a bad check down here. Wilson just going to get two yards. That was not a wise pass. That's going to bring up a difficult third and 12 for us. As we will see if we convert it, but I do not feel confident stepping back. I'm looking for Jesse Wagner. Got to throw it. And we just needed another half a second. Got it off a little bit too quick, and it sails over Wagner's head. So it's up to the defense now because we're going to have to punt this one away. Decent return for Akron, and they get a 14-yard pass on first down of one-yard run there. And just a two-yarder, a third and a seven. They're going to have to go to the air, and it is a dropped pass. I'm curious if that would have been good enough. So they'll punt it away, but we are deep. Not sure if the ball goes out of bounds there or if it died, but we get the ball to start this drive inside the five. We're going to have to hope for good ball security as Wagner gets a good four-yard pickup right up the middle on first down. All right, I'm going to take a chance here and run the read option again. If Ed Bird doesn't... Oh, no. He's broken again. Ed! Oh, my gosh. He's throwing the game. Typically, it's me doing it, but it, we can legitimately say it's Ed Bird this time around. Our quarterback must have bet on the other team. That is really, really disappointing. Well, let's throw this one up. Third and nine. Got to hope for the best on the cross. It's a bad throw, and Ed Bird is having a disastrous start to this game. That brings up fourth and nine. And again, we're going to have to punt it away. They start across the 50. You got to expect if you're Akron to come up with something. Pass thrown away, though, on first down. On second down, a four-yard carry. So third and six, and they pick up the first down with a seven-yard run up the middle. 
I'm realizing now I just said up the middle, and I have no idea to know where they ran the ball. This first down, another seven yards by the quarterback. Uh, one yard by the running back. It's third and two. It's a five-yard penalty, a false start there. And they just get it back fourth and two. They're probably going to kick this field goal, but we are out in a defensive set, so they're going to go for this. This is a big play, and I'm glad that we're going to tune in to watch it. Tight end goes in motion for Akron. Quarterback steps back to throw. He gets it off quick. It's caught and just over the line to gain. They get that to Jason Alford, and he has his first catch of the day. So Akron's drive will stay alive. The zip's moving. There's a big nine-yard rush inside the 15. And there's the 11-yard touchdown. So Akron with the extra point good is up 7-0 as we get an okay return on the kickoff. It's going to put us late in the first quarter with an offense that has not moved the ball well. Ed Bird selling on two consecutive read options. And, well, Jesse Wagner's doing what he can. I just got to keep running the ball. Here's what I think. Ed Bird starting the game. Uh, just one of three through the air as well. Offense has not come to play so far today. This could be really, really risky. Looking for Serge Mitchell on the play action. Passes off in time. Mitchell holds on to it. That ball was a little bit higher than it should have been. But we got a great receiver and through the contact, he's just fine. We move the chains. For now, we can continue to move on offense. Nearing midfield for the first time. I'm looking for Nixon here. Safety's going to back up, but it's a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to throw it deep. Nixon can't come down with it. It's picked off. Schuler has it. And Akron, oh man, a chance to take a two-score lead here. This is a terrible start. That was a bad pass for me, but just awfully disappointing. Akron pretty much to end the first quarter here is going to score a touchdown. 74 yards into the end zone as the clock expires in the first quarter. They're going to make it a 14-0 lead. So far feeling shocked as Georgia probably does as well. Down 14-0 to a number 13 Tennessee. So at the end of one, we're also down 14-0. Ed Bird's having a terrible start to the game. Ah, we're in trouble. Offense has to figure it out really, really quick here. Well, for some reason, we keep returning these kicks, and we're barely getting to the 20, if that. This drive starts from the 19, as we have the second quarter to work with, and Akron gets the ball to start the third. So we need to make sure that we are... Holding on to the football. Got to be safe. Y is wide open. But Wilson, oh, he had five yards of space and accidentally ran into our other receiver there. Still, though, it moves the chains for us as we will look to hand it off again. Got to give it to Jesse. Wagner, nice spin move from him. He runs past him, man, and Wagner's across midfield. Can't break the tackle, but he's near the 40. Serge Mitchell is out for the game with some bruised ribs, but... Jesse Wagner already, I think, 67 yards rushing on the day. Yeah, this is a risky throw, and oh my gosh, Ed Bird. Well, I shouldn't be throwing downfield with him at this point. Obviously a little bit rattled early here. Jesse Wagner is going to have to carry us to victory, trying to do something. Maybe trying to do a little bit too much there. We only get two yards. So our best player out injured for the game. Who's going to step up in the receiving core? Is it going to be enough? Looking for Broussard here on third and eight. That curl route, he's open. He comes down with it, and it's enough. Oh, that was scary, but he gets down inside the 25. Ed somehow gets back up to 50% passing on the day with that one. And Jesse, another good run, picks up 10. They didn't give, give him the first down, but almost all of it. We're going to have to run a lot of play action in this game, I think, trying to open up the run. And we're going to the check down. Smith gets us that first and goal. So a chance now for us to get on the board. The last thing that we want is to get shut out at home by Akron of all teams. Let's go with the pitch to Wagner. See if he can get some blocks. There's almost nothing but the spin move. Frees him up for five. This man is unstoppable. And now I think he's going to have to sit on the bench as Jerome Simmons will come in. On second and goal, and he's likely to put it into the end zone. He's going to throw a spin move in there and get a yard closer to the goal line. Well, it's third and goal, and we're going to have to call on somebody else's playbook. Running a fullback dive here. Can we get it? Smith up the middle, untouched, or maybe just got hit at the line, but he's in for six. 
So that makes it 14 to 7. Defense needs to get the stop on Akron here. They take the touchback. First two runs go for 14 yards. Then it's another eight. An eight yard pass. And the pass thrown away. Okay, a little bit of momentum taken away. Second and 10. It's a five yard rush. Third and five. It's a 15 yard penalty against the defense. And the defense that has been so good this year is really, really struggling. Second and 10. There's a five yard penalty against them. Probably an offside. Uh, pass thrown away, second and 10 again, even though, I don't know, maybe still second and 10. And there's a 12-yard pass, so it doesn't even matter. First and goal, false start from the offense, four-yard rush, and a third and goal. We're going to watch this. Can we hold them to the field goal? Just a minute and 15 left in the half. Quarterback in the shotgun, five wide formation, steps back looking to throw. He's going to take off scrambling, and he slides down in front of the linebacker, fourth and goal. We got to take a timeout here, coach. I can't control the timeouts in this situation, but the clock is burning as they're set up for the field goal. My only hope is that they kick this soon, and our head coach has really made this difficult. Akron running the clock all the way down. We have all three timeouts, but we haven't taken... A single one, so we just lose 40 seconds here at the end of the half. It's going to make it really difficult. And they just got three points on top of that. And as Georgia only down seven now against Tennessee. Well, 20 seconds from the 25 with our best player, who just happens to be a wide receiver, out for the game. And a quarterback who hasn't been great. I'm going to throw one up. Oh my gosh, Wilson's wide open. He comes down with it. Not quite in stride, and we take the timeout. 13 seconds left. We're at least in field goal range. The four verts comes in awfully handy there. Because it looks like now we might have a chance to score the touchdown. I'm looking for Wilson on this one again. Throwing it. The timing not quite there, and we throw the interception. It's our second of the half. No pick six, thankfully, in five seconds. I think that we should be fine. Six of 11 for Ed with two picks in the first half as Akron's going to come out. And I expect them to just run the clock out on this one and be happy heading into the locker room. Up 10 points and getting the football as well. That is really, really disappointing. Certainly not playing to our potential. The defense struggling. Uh, I feel like we haven't given up 17 points in the first half all season long on the defensive front, but then to be held to seven on offense is really, really difficult. Uh, defense has to come out strong, and then we have to come out even stronger on offense if we want to stand any sort of chance in this game. So we'll start this one by kicking it off and seeing what the D can do. They return it uh, not to the 25. One yard rush on first down and a big pass for eight gives them a third and one. They get the first down continuing to move second and eight now as they continue to run in a big third and eight for Akron. It's thrown away and the defense holds or no, maybe not. Uh, did we give them the first down? Uh, okay, apparently we're, I got to take the time out. Well, I guess we're watching this play. I didn't realize we had the ball. We must have gotten the punt. Uh... Nice pass completion there. And I guess I'm getting a free seven yards to start the drive. Well, I've lost control of the team. They're not letting me call any plays. We've been demoted mid-game as they give it to Wagner, and he has another good run there. 82 yards rushing as a team. Uh, I think it was just because they're in the hurry-up right now, and when they're in the hurry-up, I don't get the chance to call plays or play them myself. So Ed Bird from under center. Has Nixon come in motion? He steps back, looking to throw, throws, and it's deflected away by Doug Harvey. Incomplete pass. Oh my gosh, I finally convinced Coach to let me take control of the game again. Nixon coming in motion is on second and 10. We will hand the ball off, and Simmons is going to lose yards. It's third and 13. Maybe I shouldn't be calling the plays. This is not good news. Third and 13. We'll have to hope for the best as we look to the air. Maybe we find one of the Wilsons downfield, or maybe Wagner gets free. And this is a tough throw. Could be picked off. Wilson comes down with it. He's short of the line. No, they gave him the spot. It's a first down. That was incredibly generous from the referees. They won't even take a look at the spot. So we're going to come up and run a play. Hand it off to Jesse Wagner. Continue to let him run. He's got good blocking. Uh, I just ran into a lineman. Even still, we get five yards out of the play. 
So second and five here, giving it to Simmons, letting him run up the middle. He's falling forward. He's not going to get the spot, but it is third and inches. I hope we can pick that up. If we lose to Akron, it's going to hurt so bad. Simmons getting the handoff here. Got to score a touchdown on this drive, and he took a really big hit, but he moves the chain in the process. All right, let's get the play action. This seems like a good time for it, although they might be bringing pressure. We just got to hope that our tight end, Wilson, gets open early. And he is open. If we can get it there, it's picked off again. What am I doing? Oh, no. I should have known. It was a tight end. Of course he was going to be slow, and he could jump that route. Three interceptions. All three of them, I think, would be fully considered my fault. And now I'm asking a lot from the defense again as Akron is coming out moving the ball very well on this drive. There's a 25-yard pass there across the 30, moving it third and two. Ooh, it's a big penalty there. And it's going to be fourth and five, so I imagine they kick the field goal here. We need them to miss this. Although it wouldn't be the end of the world if they do hit it, but we need to somehow find two touchdowns if they get it. 17-7 to seven, turns into 20-7. to seven. So that kick is good. Well, that is not optimal. I'm scared to pass at this point, but we almost need to be doing at least a little bit. As this is a terrible decision. Wilson comes down with that. I threw that, like, into triple coverage. I got lucky there. The problem here is that there's only 40 seconds left. This is such a big risk and maybe a big mistake. We're running the read option. He actually was able to hand it off that time. Wagner, oh my gosh, weaving his way around, spinning, moving, doing all sorts of stuff. He's over 100 yards on the day. Oh, well, got to keep passing. 25 seconds left in the third quarter. We just don't have time to do anything else. We're going to get hit, thankfully, as we're throwing. No sack on that one. Oh, that was lucky. I am playing a dangerous game today, and I'm going to keep it dangerous. We're going with the traditional option, looking for the pitch. We're going to get it out late to Wagner, and he's got a decent amount of yards. Not the best blocking on the edge, but still six that we pick up there. And that's actually going to end our third quarter. So as we head into the fourth, we're down two touchdowns, and I'm playing terribly. Uh, this is not looking good whatsoever. The worst part about two of those interceptions, basically the exact same play, and they were both in the red zone, so that's pretty brutal. Quick curl route, we find Nixon there and move the chains. It's time to go in the hurry up, I think. And we'll still be running the ball quite a bit, but we just can't be uh, wasting any of these seconds. Certainly, we need to give the defense ample time to work with. Looking for it all here, second and sixth, trying to throw. B could be open, it's risky, back in the end zone. That pass wasn't thrown far enough. I'm lucky that's not interception number four. Oh my goodness, guys. I swear I'm not doing this on purpose. I'm just getting outplayed at the moment by Akron of all teams. Got a throw on third and six. X could be open. Ferguson comes down with it. Need to get this stiff arm. He doesn't. Could have been into the end zone. Just a yard short. Now again, we got to keep this hurry up going. Let's hand it off here. Get the pulling guard. And there's Simmons into the end zone. Just barely got to the edge there, but... Now it's just going to be a six-point game with 529 left to play. So what can the defense do? Bad return for Akron. Three-yard pickup, a six-yard pickup. It's third and one. They get the first down with a big pass. Second and eight turns into a third and ten as they... I think we might have gotten a sack there. And a pass incomplete. They're going to have to give us the ball back. Uh, that is fantastic. Fourth and ten, another penalty. That makes it even better for us. And we get the ball here with 413 across the 40. So plenty of time to work with. We almost have to be worried about scoring too quickly at this point as Wagner gets to the edge and he is off to the races. Oh my gosh, Jesse Wagner is an animal. 28 more added on to the total. 16 first downs now for the team as we'll step back to throw. Nixon's not going to be open, but our check down in Wilson is. And he's got a solid five, which is always good on first down. I think now I'm giving the ball back to Wagner. On the counter, if he can get a couple of blocks, that would be great. Can't make the first guy miss, though. Safety makes a good play. It's third down. Well, I'm going to turn into an AI play caller right now. We don't run these plays often. We're going to try the halfback slip screen and hope for the best. Simmons is the one in to run it. 
is it going to work? He has some blockers. It's not going to be enough. He's short of the line to gain. Fourth and two. I don't know if Coach will have us go for it or not. And it will be the offense still on the field with two minutes and 55 seconds left. And I can't run this play. Coach wanted us to run a counter, but it was with Simmons. And that's just not going to do it. So we're going to scramble outside the pocket, looking to extend a tough throw. And Wilson comes down with it and gets out of bounds. That was too lucky. That play should not have come down to that at all, but we get away with it. The drive stays alive. The fourth down conversion works. We give it to Jerome Simmons. He's moving all over the place on that one. I don't know where is that burst of speed came from, but it's an immediate first and goal. And now that we let Jesse rest for a couple of plays, he might be ready to come in here to finish this drive off. Simmons on first and goal up the middle. We're just going to let him go forward, pound it in as much as he can. And this is so risky, but I'm going to start burning the clock because Akron will only need a field goal to win should we score here. Robinson, the third stringer, comes in. Hopefully Wagner's not injured. And with a minute and a half on the clock, we get a yard on the play. This is an incredibly risky time to try and pass the football. Less than a minute to go in the game. Down six, throwing it. Simmons drops the ball. That was a touchdown for sure. Instead, it's fourth and goal. Through all of this, Jesse Wagner has been on the sideline. This is about as scary as it could get. Fourth and goal, 47 seconds left in the game. Bird is a slow quarterback. B was kind of open. We're having to throw it to Wilson. He's short and he couldn't hold on to it anyways. Terrible decisions for me all game long have led to this and it's likely going to be a loss. We'll see if the defense can do anything. A quick three and out could give us a few seconds to run some plays. That was a good first down. And here on second down, they got six yards to go. The handoff up the middle. There's the first down and that's going to be game over. I risked it all trying to burn the clock down. But Wagner's stamina was too low and he wasn't able to come in. So Akron comes out in the victory formation. They take a knee. Looks like they're going to be able to take a second. That's going to end this game. Absolutely devastating. Oh, this loss is fully on me. I can take the criticism. Bad passes all day led to three interceptions and some bad clock management at the end. Leads to us losing at home against Akron. It's our second loss of the season. And now we're one and one in conference, which will certainly hurt our uh, our chances of trying to win the whole dang thing. Leroy Levine ends up being their player of the game. And we just got to go heads down into the locker rooms because we played uh, not a good game. I don't even want to look at the game stats. LSU beats UCLA. We all know that's not right. Oh, three turnovers. We won the time of possession battle. We outgained them in every aspect. But we couldn't hold on to the football, which means that we couldn't score. So many opportunities thrown away. Jerome Simmons somehow is our offensive part of the game. That doesn't seem right because he had seven carries for 22 yards, where it's like Jesse had uh, like 16 carries for 150. <laughs> uh, anyways, Wade Benjamin, six tackles. Good for him. That is incredibly frustrating. We fall to three and two on the season. We have to play on the road at Bowling Green next week. Well, I don't know if we deserve it, but at least we leveled up our coaching and we pick up an 80 overall left tackle. Uh, fairly certain that's another Juco guy, but that's a big pickup for us. Uh, decent amount of XP and, well, Bowling Green's 3-1. and one. They're also favored to win, although for the first time, we are a higher overall in one of these matchups. So that could potentially be something to look forward to. Just go ahead and level ourselves up now. We're going to go with the athlete. We want our players to be as fast and as strong and as agile as possible. And then maybe we can soothe the pain by looking at uh, some upsets in our top 25, if anything. Number one, Georgia plays number 10, Coastal, this week. They just beat Tennessee, but I'm interested in the losses. This is a lot of top 10 matchups. Oklahoma and Texas will have to play as well. Cal, UCLA, Georgia Tech, Clemson, Florida, LSU, Nebraska, Penn State. There's a lot there. 
Uh, and there's a lot of losses. Purdue, Minnesota, UCLA, Clemson, Tennessee, uh, and Oregon, and Cal. All lost, but stay in the top 25, and Boise State's the only one to drop out. So an absolutely chaotic week. Uh, a bunch of teams that move up all over the place. Notre Dame jumps from 10 to 4. So just kind of bizarre. Uh, a bad week for us. A bad week for a lot of teams in the top 25. Coastal still has uh, David West up there, at least in the Heisman. Maybe they can get another one. 12 of 22, 172 yards, four total touchdowns. They got the win. It wasn't against a great opponent, but they were able to get it done at least. And that's a lot more than I can say about us. Again, I played like doo-doo. Unfortunately, I'm not going to get the chance to redeem myself because that is the end of this episode. If you enjoyed this one, well, hit the like button. Maybe hit the dislike for all those interceptions. I don't care. I kind of deserve it. Once you've done that, head down, hit the subscribe button so you can see me get the opportunity to redeem myself. And then when you're done with that, head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's a link to my Twitter, which you should go follow because now that we've hit 2,500 subs on YouTube, when we hit 200 follows on Twitter, I'm going to be giving away an exclusive Goonmaster t-shirt. So go follow on Twitter. There's also going to be a link to our community Discord and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get that as well. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grey Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.